In this screencast, we'll discuss the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure requirements for search warrants for mere evidence. Be forewarned, this is potentially the most confusing part of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Just to refresh your memory, in a previous screencast, we noted the best way to understand this information is to mentally organize all of the things the Code of Criminal Procedure permits a search warrant to search for into four groups. All but one of these categories of things are numbered under CCP 18.02. The groups themselves are not found in the CCP, but keeping them mentally organized in this manner will help you understand and keep the differences straight in your mind. We've previously discussed this top group, which might be considered the general or catch-all category. We'll now discuss the objects categorized under CCP 1802, parenthetical A, parenthetical 10, in this group. According to CCP 1802, parenthetical A, parenthetical 10, a search warrant may authorize a search for property or items, except the personal writings by the accused, constituting evidence of an offense, or constituting evidence tending to show that a particular person committed an offense. So, CCP 1802, parenthetical A, parenthetical 10, can be thought of as mere evidence. Things that are not illegal in and of themselves, or things that have evidentiary value, but are not named in the first group of items we spoke about in a previous screencast. Examples of this kind of property or items might be ledgers or written or typed notes about drug sales. These aren't in and of themselves illegal, but they might tend to show that a particular person committed an offense. The same with taking a DNA sample from a suspect. DNA is not in and of itself illegal, but it might tend to show a person committed an offense. The CCP sets this category of objects aside for special protection. According to CCP 1801, parenthetical C, a search warrant may not be issued for mere evidence unless the affidavit sets forth sufficient facts to establish probable cause that a specific offense has been committed, the specifically described property or items that are to be searched for or seized are evidence of that offense or that a particular person committed that offense, and the property or items constituting evidence to be searched for or seized are located at or on the particular person, place, or thing to be searched. The rationale behind these specific requirements may revolve around privacy. Things such as personal writings, like a diary or journal, or DNA are obviously very specific to an individual. They may show that someone committed a crime, but they may also show things that are irrelevant to the issue at hand, or, further, contain speech that might be protected under the First Amendment. The CCP first sets them aside and iterates that affidavits for search warrants for mere evidence must be very specific. Further, CCP 1801 parenthetical C states, with only a few exceptions that are outlined under 1801 parenthetical D, parenthetical I, and parenthetical J, we'll talk about those later, only certain magistrates may sign search warrants for mere evidence. The magistrate signing this type of search warrant may only be a judge of a municipal court of record or of a county court who is an attorney licensed by the state of Texas, a county court at law judge, a district court judge, a judge of the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, or a justice of the Supreme Court of Texas. The rationale behind this bears some speculation. All of these types of magistrates the CCP identifies as being authorized to sign a search warrant for mere evidence have one thing in common. They all must be licensed attorneys. Be aware, you don't necessarily have to be a lawyer to be a magistrate in Texas. Remember, from earlier in the CCP, a magistrate may be a mayor or recorder of a city or town. Further, a person does not have to be a lawyer to be a justice of the peace in Texas. As we previously mentioned, mere evidence may be distinguished by privacy and free speech concerns. The CCP may essentially mandate only magistrates who are attorneys licensed by the state as able to sign mere evidence warrants to make sure decisions are informed, essentially an extra level of scrutiny. All of this might seem somewhat confusing, but the CCP endeavors to add at least what might be called some common sense factors into the mix. According to CCP 1801 parenthetical D, 
only the specifically described property or items set forth in a search warrant for mere evidence issued under CCP 1802 parenthetical A parenthetical 10 or property, items, or contraband identified in CCP 1801 parenthetical A parenthetical 1 through parenthetical 9 or parenthetical 12 may be seized under a search warrant for mere evidence. So what this means is that a peace officer who seeks a search warrant for a whole bunch of items, including mere evidence under CCP 1802 parenthetical A parenthetical 10, does not need to get two search warrants. As long as he or she adheres to the higher standards for mere evidence under 1802 parenthetical A parenthetical 10, including specific information in the probable cause, and a signing magistrate who is an attorney licensed by state. Other objects not considered mere evidence may be included in the same search warrant. There may be times when a magistrate may need to issue a search warrant for the same location a second time. This would be called a subsequent search. So peace officers serve a search warrant and then, for whatever reason, realize they need to go back a second time. Again, because mere evidence might be subject to privacy or speech protections, the CCP adds additional scrutiny to instances when a law enforcement agency may have to go back a second time for mere evidence. According to CCP 1801 parenthetical D, a subsequent search warrant for mere evidence may be issued to search the same person, place, or thing subjected to a prior mere evidence search warrant only if the subsequent search warrant is issued by a judge of a district court, a court of appeals, the court of criminal appeals, or the Texas Supreme Court. While adding all these additional requirements for mere evidence, the CCP also recognizes that many of the 254 counties in Texas are rural and access to magistrates, particularly magistrates of district courts and higher, might be difficult for peace officers. Because of this, it makes exceptions to the magistrate warrant requirement in certain instances. According to CCP 18.01 parenthetical I, in a county that does not have a judge of a municipal court of record with a courtroom located in that county, or does not have a county court who is an attorney licensed by the state of Texas, or does not have a county court at law judge who is an attorney licensed by the state of Texas, any magistrate may issue a search warrant under CCP 18.02 parenthetical A parenthetical 10 or CCP 18.02 parenthetical A parenthetical 12. However, these exceptions do not apply to a subsequent search warrant under CCP 1802 parenthetical A parenthetical 10 for mere evidence. A final exception is found under CCP 1801 parenthetical J. If you recall, we mentioned that DNA was considered mere evidence. DNA is not in and of itself illegal, but DNA may tend to show a person committed an offense. Another type of mere evidence found within a person is blood. Blood is not in and of itself illegal, but blood may tend to show a person committed an offense, such as driving while intoxicated. While we want an extra level of scrutiny for DNA, which is likely to link a suspect to an offense which is a felony, such as sexual assault, some intoxication offenses are misdemeanors and very, very common, and perhaps don't require quite the same level of scrutiny as a DNA sample related to a felony. For this reason, the CCP states that any magistrate who is an attorney licensed by the state may issue a search warrant under CCP 18.02 parenthetical A parenthetical 10 to collect a blood specimen from a person who is arrested for an intoxication offense and refuses to submit to a breath or blood alcohol test. This carves out an exception for blood search warrants for blood for DWI offenses and makes it slightly easier for a peace officer to obtain a warrant for blood, which is technically considered mere evidence. Finally, and perhaps the most confusing part of the whole CCP, 1801 parenthetical E states a search warrant may not be issued under 1802 parenthetical A parenthetical 10 to search for and seize property or items that are not described in CCP 1801 parenthetical A parenthetical 1 through 9 and located in an office of a newspaper, news magazine, television station, or radio station. So remember, we've mentioned that writings, which fall under mere evidence, may come with privacy or more importantly in this case, speech protection concerns. Freedom of speech and freedom of the press is very important to our society and culture, and the CCP does not want to seemingly endorse, or make it easy at least, for an unscrupulous government to suppress freedom of the press under the auspices of a search warrant. 
So what this section means is a peace officer cannot request and a magistrate cannot order a search warrant for parenthetical 10 mere evidence, parenthetical 11 persons, parenthetical 12, which is contraband, parenthetical 13, electronic consumer information, or parenthetical 14, wireless communication devices that are located in an office of a newspaper, news magazine, television station, or radio station. Note, all of these things could tend to show that a particular person committed an offense, but they also might be related to freedom of the press and contain criticism of the government. For instance, editorial scripts, a person who is particularly outspoken against the government, equipment such as monitors and broadcast devices that the government could confiscate under the pretext that it is the result of criminal activity, and evidence of communication with sources otherwise supposed to be anonymous. This prohibition for search warrants for these particular things in a newspaper, news magazine, television station, or radio station is all consistent with protecting freedom of the press. The CCP goes on to say that in no event may property or items not described in CCP 1802 parenthetical A 1 through 9 be legally seized in any search pursuant to a search warrant of an office of a newspaper, news magazine, television station, or radio station. So what this means is that search warrants may not seize the categories of objects with an X over them, only the objects on the lower half of the screen. Usually at this point, students will become confused and ask if a person committed an offense or wanted to commit an offense, should they just hide out in a newspaper office? Remember, this is a search warrant we're talking about here. Arrest warrants are not prohibited from being executed in these places, and court orders which have magistrate oversight may be sought to obtain other items in these locations, which are legitimate evidence of criminal offenses and not related to free speech. So, up until this point, we've talked about the first group of items subject to search warrants under the Code of Criminal Procedure, and mere evidence described under parenthetical 10. Don't worry, it gets easier from here. In the next screencast, we'll talk about parenthetical 12, otherwise known as contraband.